you don't remove the people in this season of your life that's not conducive to, conducive to your birthday, they're only going to hurt you and slow down delivery. When you go to the hospital, that's like, ain't it like a pregnancy floor? What, what is it called? Any nurses in here? Maternity ward. They don't put the dude that's suffering from cancer in the maternity ward. They don't put the dude that came in and his arm is broke in the maternity ward. Why? Because it's unhealthy and it's actually um, 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 threatening to the, the birthing of the mother and the child. So everybody on that floor is what? Having babies. Some of y'all need to get around some baby having people. This, let me just hit that. Some people, even in the church, ain't healthy for you to be around. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Because they, all they're going to do is jealous and be jealous of you. And you can't be around your baby. Uh-uh, and they're going to, can I hold her? And because she's close and she's a church girl, you're going to think, yeah, she's safe for me and this is good for me. But really she's holding your baby like, oh, she ugly. This ain't going to never, oh, look at it, oh, little dark skin, little black thing. Oh, am I lying? And, and you sitting there like, look at my bestie. Let me take a picture while your baby is in jeopardy. Why they, why the, why the demonic demons that's on them and your baby and say, hey, this is IT, TT, TT baby, mm-hmm. uh, ugly. Thank you. I ain't cuter than my son. I ain't cuter than my birthday. My baby was cuter. See, y'all, gonna, y'all can't even trust some church people in this season. Y'all got to go to divine design people in this season of your life. And y'all going to have to make some really hard choices, some of y'all. This is my homie. This is my homie. We went through, he had my back. Is your homie, are you living for your homie? Or are you living for God? Did, did, did your homie wake you up this morning? Or, or did God wake you up this morning? And this is the thing too. Some people was only supposed to be in our lives for a season. And we thought it was supposed to be forever. After I birthed a baby, I ain't going back to that doctor. I'm going back to my regular doctor. Just for a season that I was supposed to have a maternity doctor. What they call them? Baby doctors. Like I was on... I, OBG Ys. W. The OBXs. I'm not going back to an OBGYN if I got a pain in my leg. It was a, only a birthing season that they were designed to be in my life. And I've experienced this while I try to hold on to leadership to people I love and respect it, but they were only supposed to be in there for a season. What happened is when I went back to these same people after the baby was birthed, then, the baby, then they gave me bad information. Because they wasn't experienced to help raise a baby. They only was only experienced to help me birth the baby. You don't need to take an epidural. That's only for if you want to dodge the pain. You don't need an epidural. I said epidural, the dural dural. Y'all be scandalous, see? I'm gonna go viral for the wrong stuff. Pastor can't talk. <laughs> and he's gonna be giving me epidural. OB, OBGYX. <laughs> epidural, durum or durum? I was cool the first time. God, look at me. You don't need an epidural when your baby is seven months. What you need to be laying in bed can't move for? I, I can talk, but I can't feel nothing. What do you need that for at seven months? You need a doctor that's going to put your baby on the ground and say she's healthy. Yep, growing healthy. Keep her vitamins. She's not equipped. There's people in your life right now that's only equipped is going to be only equipped for birthing. Let me say, all y'all won't stay at worst way forever. This is just, and I'm not going to try to hold you here. I'm not one of the parents. I'm trying to get as many members as I can and lock them and hold them. God got you here just for birthing. And after you birthed out and get what you need, your husband going to come and have to take you away. And I'm going to cry like, can you just become a member too? So I got a loser. But I'm going to say, girl, go and obey God. Uh, some of your men, God got you here. You may have to leave. Like, this is just a season in your life where I'm supposed to be here to help catch the baby. Push. Boop. Oh. Y'all remember Martin? I should have put the clip up. I remember Martin, he, he went and she pushed, he caught the mug. Like, I'm only here to catch your baby and help you push out because I have experience pushing out babies. I birthed the ministry in my living room with not one dime, not one cent, not, nope, well, five or six people. And a 501c3, that's what I had, nothing else. Not a logo, I had a name, a 501c3, and about four people down with me. I know about birthing. I know about birthing pains. I know how it feels to say, push, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And I ain't, ain't put, ain't nothing, can't, ain't no movement. But I'll be pushed like, Ugh, Ugh, and ain't nothing happen. I know what it feel like to have to obey God, and it doesn't make any sense. So I may not be the pastor God has for your next 20 years, but I bet you I can get that baby out of you. <laughs> y'all need to get around baby-making people. Baby, I mean, pregnant, other pregnant people. Y'all, um, 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 y'all remember Mary? What happened when, when God impregnated her? What did she do? 
she went to see her pregnant cousin. What happens when she meets and gets to her pregnant cousin? It's an instant connection. When people that has the same spirit doing the same thing you're doing, as soon as you get around, you're like, this is destiny. I, why are we so close so fast? I feel like we've been knowing each other our whole life. Why? Because God said this is destiny. That's why some of you men going to look at your wife like, yeah, she the one. It's going to be something about her that your spirit is going to pull you, and you're going to be like, yep, God, she the one. Let me go get the ring. In a certain season of your life when God is birthing something new in your life, you got to get around people doing the same thing you're doing. Listen, weed smokers hang with weed smokers. I'm not trying to smoke the blunt by myself. Testify in the back, Pastor. <laughs> Ain't nothing better than you like, you want to match me? I roll up through you, roll up through you. I, 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 anybody come in, you matching me? Now, one of the requirements, you got a couple of leechers, but one of the requirements is you going to match? You going to come in, and everybody roll up, and you put on the table, you chill, and everybody just rotate. Like, I, I mean, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I expose myself. <laughs> I just exposed my whole self. Everybody like, Pastor. You want to be around people that's birthing like you. That's why some of y'all come up in here like, I love this. God got me loving in this season and serving in this season. They look like me. They're called to do the same thing I'm looking like. That's why I can't leave. I'm comfortable here. I feel so good here. Like, it feels like there's no religion here. I can be free to worship how I want. I can sit down if I want to sit. I can sit down if I want to sit. I can run. This is great. That's why some of y'all are feeling like that. I got around other pregnant people. You need people that's not going to be jealous of, that everybody's supporting you. And it's your time. And it's your season. You need people that's going to help you. And when they see you shine, they're like, yes. Yeah. They ain't it. Like. Here's my question of the day. Can you honestly say that everybody around you is edifying you in this season of pregnancy? In this season, God is growing you and trying to get his glory out of your life. Have you exposed your baby to debt to preserve friendships, family ships, and loyalty to illegitimate resources? I, I, don't, I don't care. I had to do this in my life. I don't care how bestie and cool we are. I'm pregnant and God is producing this baby and we call words way. I didn't even know I was pregnant yet. I had to separate from some friends. I had to separate from some people. Some of my homies I haven't seen since I got pregnant. Since 2015, 16, I ain't really seen them or hung with them because I got pregnant. And nobody understand pregnancy. So when you separate yourself and you're like, I can't hang anymore. And I can't run around with girls anymore. And I can't run in the clubs no more. And, and, and I, I'm too pregnant for that. And I have to move because something don't sit right. And my feet hurt. And I'm swole. And I'm having morning sickness. And I'm getting up at 3 a.m. reading the Bible. Like, and you don't understand that right now. So normally when I would be kicking it with you, smoking and drinking and kicking and chasing chicks, I'm up at 1 o'clock in my word. I'm up and figuring out what God wants for me. And I don't understand why I feel so good and so full and something that's happening. And see, well, that's where a lot of y'all are at. Y'all got third trimester, just everything is just, it's just everything's overflowing. You can't figure out what's wrong with you. Bentley can't figure out what's wrong with him. Mr. Ben, he's calling me like, I don't, it's like fire in my bones. Like, I don't feel, like, what is this? Like, what is this tingling? What is this thing in me? Because he's pregnant. And God said, it's, it's birthing. Make arrangements. It's birthing. It's time for you to birth out. And just for a minute, let me finish this. Can you honestly say that everybody around you is edifying you in this season of pregnancy? In the season God is growing you and trying to get his glory out of your life, have you exposed your baby, your destiny, the vision and purpose God is putting you for your life, the thing he is taking you to, have you exposed it to death because you're hanging on to illegitimate resources, people, family, friendships? Stuff, because that's my mama, that's my daddy, that's my cousin. I can't, I'm loyal to my family. I'm a big family person. So you go, when God said don't drink anymore, I want you holy, and you go down out of town and hang with your cousin that you know is ratchet. So now you go to the club and like, girl, I just want to drink. You know, when you got around drinkers, they try to get everybody drunk. I, have, I don't know nothing about that. I ain't going to lie. College is my main purpose would have everybody drunk and me just be tipsy. <laughs> I'm like, come on, take a shot. That'll be mine. That'll be theirs. Like, come on, it's the same sauce. No, it ain't. Get around people that are so busy trying to get you. Hey, girl, meet me at the singles group. That girl, meet me at the, come on, like, you, it, 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 God is telling you it's going to be people you have to let go. And some of it's going to be indefinitely, and some is just seasonal. Some is just seasonal. Watch. I don't care if it's your cousin, baby daddy. I don't. Some of y'all, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Like, are you going to be loyal to politics? Or to what God say? 
Well, I've been at this job for 20 years. I got 10 years for retirement. Are you going to be loyal to me? Because you stay at that job, it's going to expose your baby to debt. You're committed to unqualified sources right now, resources. Are you going to be committed to me or something? But I'm black. I support black business and black commerce and black love and just black everything. Let me, because I don't care. Let's stop lowering ourselves to black everything. When I see us do that, all I think of is we're lowering the standard. For instance, black love, I love it. Well, every time you see a couple that get it together, act like they got something, they act like they got some sense, we just celebrate, that should be the normal. I love black fathers take care of their kids. So you see one baby daddy pick up his kids every month, every weekend, and we celebrate it, he should be doing that every day. That is, you don't get a cookie for doing what you're supposed to do. And what is so such a rarity in our culture, unfortunately, that we do what we're supposed to do, that we love and take care of our wives and submit to God and love our children and raise our children, that when we see one person get it done right. Now, know how much praise I used to get for being a deep half, and I wasn't even a great father, I was a half. I would send a bunch of money and think I did my job and go back to school and kick it. And I got so much praise out of time for being such a great dad. Black fathers rule, king and your princess. And I'm like, I used to hear that like, bro, I should be way better than this. I don't get a cookie for going to my son's birthday party and bringing horses and a go-kart. Like, you know how many mothers have had that baby parties by themselves with no help? I don't get a cookie for helping like I'm supposed to. And this is, this is what we keep doing. This is what we keep doing. Give me that, that video one. This is what we're doing. Watch this. This is what we're doing, y'all. And we come to church every Sunday. And we ring out the mop and we go hang right around the same thing. We go expose ourselves right back to the very thing. And we wait and, we're, and then what happened in 10 years, 15 years of being at the church, we're exhausted. And we're like, I'm just, God ain't moved for me because you, 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 you believe in him and you trust him and you believe everything he's saying. But then you return back to the same friends, the same area, the same sin. And the same thing, and then you come next Sunday and you rain that mop out again because it's full, it's really full all the way back up again. And you get you what you need, and you go, oh, I'm going. You're going to step out Monday, and, 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 and Juju going to call you like, bro, pull up. You're going to be like, all right, cuz. I'm just going for the video games, God. I'm just going to play Madden. 2K. And you go, and you, sm- you smell it on the, way, on the way to the door. Oh, my God, Kush. Now you smoke Kush anymore? What they smoke? Whatever. You smell it. And you're like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, I got this guy, and the minute you walk in, they're like, oh, come on, what you doing? Come on, I'm, I need to play. Though. And you're like, and you take it, you be about to pass, you're like, uh-huh. or you walk up to that door, like, we just going on a date. Well, we just, are we just watching a movie? Like, we not, like, I'm going to stay in the kitchen. Let me stay away from that. Let me, let me. Romans chapter 12. The truth is God is trying to produce something in your life and you keep going right back to that. Because you keep your life, what God is trying to do in your life right now, he wants you married. But your homies keep saying, bro, don't get married, y'all cool. Like, like, don't do that. Don't mess up your life, bro. Commitment, bro. I don't even do all that. So that, now you just put that in your head. So now you look at your girl and you look at your guy like, all right, we can just wait. Let's just keep having sex and sin, filling up our mop. Romans 12, one, watch this in the message version. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday life, your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. He said, you want to offer me something? Embrace what I've done for you. How you really embrace it by living for me. He says, he says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking about it. <sighs> I could, that's a whole sermon. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. It will be no growth if we continue to be the same people and be around the same people. Do the same thing. He said, I need to change the way you think. And I got to give it to you in the Amplified version because that version is just fun to me. But this is going to give you a little bit more meat to your bones. First one in the Amplified version, same thing. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, he's talking about the body. He's talking about us. By the mercies of God. So how can you be talking to brothers and sisters of Christ? These are ones of us who already believe in Jesus Christ. 
We just got a lifestyle issue. Brothers and sisters, I urge you, I beg you, please stop living like this. He says, he, says, uh, he said, present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart, sanctified, as living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logic, intelligent act of worship. He says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. And we, oh my God, I wish I could preach. This, I could just, this is a lesson by myself. He says, with its superficial values and customs, be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your you got to change the way you think. God, and he says, he, he said, watch this. You're not going to do the changing. I'm going to do the work in you. I just need you to present yourselves up. I just need you. 